SMT Nation, we back. Nation, we've got an update out of Verizon. Uh, there's a, a bit of a situation with some radio gear that Verizon could really use. Uh, this would really make their lives a lot easier in terms of networking. Give them flexibility. Give them some, I don't know, uh, I guess an improvement to engineering and design of their network. It's a big piece of their, you know, their future networking. So I want to do a follow up. This story actually dates back several months. So this would be kind of an update to it. Samsung, CBRS, and C-band radio approval through the FCC. Uh, Verizon now starting to force the issue, push for it after Samsung kind of put in uh, for this approval from the FCC. So I'll be sure to link the uh, newest version of the article for you. It'll be in the description here. Monica Alvin Fierce Wireless. Also, ways to support the SMT are in the description as well. Okay, so the initially, and the story dates back, I think, to like, I'm trying to remember, maybe like April, I think, or something like that. So when the story goes back to April, it was initially just the Samsung story. For those of you that don't understand why that matters, Samsung Electronics is the company that produces a lot of the the radio gear for Verizon in the C-band and the CBRS frequencies, right? So like the 3.7, the 3550, basically the capacity of the network, right? That Verizon is leveraging, you know, across the nation. Uh, some markets, Verizon uses Ericsson. And a lot of the East Coast, like especially here in Cleveland, you've seen what I've tested on my channel. It's Samsung. So Ericsson has been supporting, you know, the CBRS C-band, you know, uh, configuration and equipment. Uh, you know, it really would make life better on these OEMs and the carriers deploying. So uh, they're putting in officially a petition through the support of Samsung and Verizon for a FCC waiver on 5G radios that support operations in C-band and CBRS. Now, the reason why this is important is because previously Charter, uh, for those of you that don't know, that's Spectrum, they had a little bit of objection to this. They wanted to see some some evidence, some proof that you know the, the, the new hardware uh, wouldn't interfere with CBRS operations, right? OOBE limits. So they were they were concerned about that because and it's and it's warranted. You know, Spectrum wants to deploy small cells all over the place in their markets, and they just want to make sure that it's going to operate just fine without any trouble and and chance of interference. But you know, Samsung's really forcing the issue. They really want to push with this, and so does Verizon, right? So that's really what it's going to be. It's going to be on the FCC to go ahead and grant the approval, and if everything is on the up and up, you know, things can kind of go from there. I mean, Samsung wants to get these radios to Verizon. Verizon wants to get the radios so they can, you know, have a better network. And, you know, killing two birds with one stone is huge. You get these two frequencies broadcasting from the same radio. That helps with construction of cell sites. It limits the weight. It limits the footprint of the tower gear. You know, think about the small cell restrictions. Think about the macro cells, rooftop sites. Everything has limitations. So when you get this synergy within the construction of these tower sites it really does help so i've i kind of looked at the schematics of all this and you know I, I looked at the potential here obviously this would be huge for verizon huge for markets that need more capacity especially from a small cell grid standpoint than also the macro cell right so you know I, I looked back at the old story you know just to kind of brush up on some of those things that really all it's about is the out of band emissions. They just want to make sure there's not going to be any leaking, any, you know, type of frequency interference, you know, bordering and adjacent uh, licenses and things of that nature. Remember, you know, you got unlicensed CBRS, you got licensed CBRS, you've got limited power in that band. Uh, the C band is just above it at 3,700, right? The CBRS at 3,550. All these concerns are warranted, but. I think it is at the interest of the FCC to approve and then, you know, obviously Samsung kind of shows that you don't have to worry about the interference and then Charter Spectrum is cool with everything and, and we should be golden. Guys, this would be really big for the Verizon network, right? We've seen how they've had to put up separate radios for CBRS and C-band. This simplifies the process. And I get it, you know, there's, there's some power efficiency savings in there, but really what it's about, folks... It's about the construction and the design of these sites and 
space and weight are at a finite availability like there there's a lot to the builds you know and the schematics and and I've, I've seen the permits and stuff like that this would be huge for verizon especially in places where verizon wants to do a lot with small cells and add density and have more sites this would be huge for them so probably pretty important that this happens for verizon you could see why they're pushing for it and why samsung their oem across probably half the country is pushing for it as well uh do you guys think the fcc grants the approval and the waiver or do you think they kind of lollygag install the nice thing is, is this doesn't impact uh you know their their lapse on the spectrum authority so <laughs> at least we'll get some action i guess they've got more to do um we'll see what happens with it my prediction is they approve this helps ericsson this helps nokia this helps uh samsung you know in, in working forward in radio gear in the future what do you guys think of all this? Sound off in the comment section below. You all the voice of the people. The SMT Nation, let your voice be heard.